This is a little tour for any existing GIS users who are coming to QGIS for the first time and aren't familiar with how it works. You'll see something like this when you get it on your computer. You'll have a layers panel on the left and a browser panel as well, usually. The browser panel and the layer panel can easily be moved around. So if you left click when it says layers, for example, and hold the left button down, you can drag and drop and reposition it. And if I move it down below, it will be docked below. If I hover over the middle section, it will be tabbed. But by default, you'll probably see your browser panel on top. I like to leave my layers panel above the browser panel and I can drag and drop or move the separator around. So that's the layout you'll see at first. If I want to add a world map to the screen, I can do it very quickly. A little trick in QGIS is go down to the coordinate box at the bottom, delete the text that's there, and in lowercase letters, type world and hit enter, and you'll get a world map. If you ever want to change the way a layer looks in QGIS, go to the layers panel, and you can double click on the layer. That's gonna open up the layer properties. And from there, via the symbology tab, I can go to simple fill, and I can see the fill color and the fill style. So let me change the fill color to a green. You can use the color wheel like this, or you can select other colors, or I can click the color patch and enter HTML codes or RGB values. And I can change the opacity. Let me just make it a greenish color like this. Okay. If I want to make the stroke color, so the outline color the same as the fill color, I can drag and drop between color patches like that. That's quite useful sometimes when you want to have the stroke color on the same kind of color theme, but maybe a bit darker. So I'll change the V value to make it a bit darker. Click OK. I'm going to reduce the thickness a bit and I'll click apply. I'll maybe increase the thickness of that line a bit more. So that's a quick tip on styling layers. Now, one of the things you'll know if you're an existing GIS user is all the different things you can do in GIS, all the different geoprocessing operations, all the raster things. But what you might not know is where to find them all. So what I recommend is look for the little icon that looks like a cog and hit that button. That's going to open the processing toolbox and all the tools you're familiar with and you've probably used a million times in the past, like clip, you'll find them in there, clip, buffer, dissolve, merge, all those things. If I type in buffer here, you will see in the vector geometry options, the buffer tool. And if you want to open a tool and use it, I can double click and then there's your options there. They're generally pretty self-explanatory. So that's where you can find them. You will also find stuff via the vector menu and the raster menu, but the processing toolbox is great because it's really good search functionality. So if I type in raster, I can find all the different tools available in QGIS. Some of them are native to QGIS and other ones are, co are coming from GDAL or things like grass. So there's loads of options and loads of tools, so many more than you can find by the menus alone. So that's particularly useful, but if you don't know about it, you wouldn't necessarily know where to look. So use the processing toolbox to search for stuff. If you want to get data into QGIS, it's really straightforward. One way is just to go to where you've got your data on your computer and you can drag and drop files in. So this is me dropping in a shapefile and I'm just grabbing the SHP part of the shapefile and dragging and dropping it into the map canvas. I did that there. And if I zoom in, you can see a layer has been added. It's on screen and it's on the left hand side and I can tick it and untick it. If I ever need to change the coordinate reference system of my map, so in this case, let's change it to British National Grid. I can do that via the button in the bottom right, which currently says EPSG 4326. I'll click that. And in the filter box, you can search for projections. So I'll type here British for British National Grid. Because I've used it recently, it's listed in my recently used section. But if any coordinate reference systems haven't been used before, they'll be down here. And I'll choose this one, OSGB 36, British National Grid. I'll click OK. There's sometimes a warning. That's fine. I'll click OK. And this just tells us this line at the top tells us about the transformation. I can close that because that's fine. 
So that's how we can get data in. If I decide I want to select some features, we've got select tools in the selection toolbar. So this one, select features, anything that gets selected is going to be yellow, like it was in the old arc view. So it's yellow. And then if I decide I want to save these into a new layer, say a shapefile or a GeoJSON or a Geo package, anytime I want to do that, I can right click and I can export and I can save all features in this layer. So if I wanted to save it as a new shapefile or a Geo package, I could do that. If I want to save only the selected features, I can do that too. But let's say I just want to play around with this. I could also edit, copy features and go to edit and paste them as a temporary layer in my project like that. So you can copy and paste layers or bits of layers if you want to. So drag and drop data in, right click a layer and export it. You can also get data in using the button here, which is open data source manager. And we can add vector data, raster data, and all sorts of other layers. If you just want to add a map layer for the whole world, something like OpenStreetMap, what you need to do is go to your browser section and if you don't see browser for any reason or any of the panels are missing, if you go to view, then panels, you can turn things on. So the browser panel is already ticked. And in the browser panel in QGIS, you've got a section called XYZ tiles or XYZ tiles, depending on how you say it. I've added other ones, but OpenStreetMap will be there for you by default. So you can double click it and you'll get an OpenStreetMap layer. One thing with those tiled layers is you need to make sure the coordinate reference system is correct otherwise it might look fuzzy so it's always going to be down the bottom right in QGIS you can click the button and the coordinate reference system for the global maps like this the XYZ ones it's going to be 3857 that's the code and I type it into the filter box and we see this one so if you're ever adding an XYZ tile layer you want the projection the coordinate reference system to be WGS84 Studio Mercator. So I'll click OK and it's nice and sharp again. So a few useful things there, hopefully, if you're coming to QGIS from other software. If you ever wanted to add elements to the map canvas, you can do that quite easily via view and decorations. And this is for just doing a quick map, not a fully fledged map layout. You can add these elements. You want to add some text and a title or copyright label or an image, you can do that here, but like in Map Info or ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Desktop, you'll want to create a print layout if you're doing a map for uh, you know, a fully fledged design with a map in it. So you can go to Project for this and New Print Layout. So we'll look at that briefly before we finish. So Project Menu, New Print Layout. You'll see the shortcut, Control P. I'll call this one layout example and you can have as many layouts as you like when it opens up it's always useful to make sure the window's maximized you hit this button it will maximize the page if you ever want to know how to change the page size it's really easy just right click on the page and you go to page properties i can change it to us letter size i can change it to european like a4 size I can just change the width manually as well. So if I want the aspect ratio to match the screen, I'll just do 320 by 180 or whatever you want to do in terms of 16 to 9. So that's really simple. And then anything you add to a page in the QGIS print layout is called an item. So let's add a map item. Click the button, click and drag where we want it to appear. And then this takes a little bit of getting used to, particularly if you're coming from other software. The button below, the one that's got the arrow in it, which is move or select item, the button below that is going to allow us to move the map within the frame. And when we've got this happening, on the right hand side, we can see map one is bold, so that we know that's selected. We can also see the little square features around the edge, which means it's selected. And if I use my mouse wheel, I can scroll in and out. You can also set the scale exactly to what you want in the scale box on the right. So I can zoom in a bit. 
In this case, I'm just messing around and showing you as an example. So let's add some text. This is going to be a text item. Click on that. I will add it. And you notice as I'm moving stuff around, it will snap to other map items and to the edge of the page. I'll add that there. On the right hand side, I can change the text from the default. And I've added that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag this line up a bit to give me more space. I'll click on the font button, change it to size 60, change the font to open sans. And I'm going to change the color here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the little drop down at the end of the color patch and choose pick color. I'm going to pick color from the map, purple or green. Let's take green. And then I will change it to semi bold. If I go back to the label font, I'll choose to center it and put it in the middle. Okay, so that's just a little example of the kinds of things you can do. And then if you want to get your map out as a PDF, you can click that button, SVG that button. This button's export as image. And again, they're also available via the layout menu, export as image. If I want to move anything around, I can use the arrow to select or move items that will move stuff around and if I do the same for the map frame it allows me to snap it to the edge of the page the key thing in the print layout is anything that is selected can be edited in item properties and it can be turned on or off in the items tab when you are working here if you don't see any of the tabs that should be there just go to the view menu and panels to turn them on. Okay, so that's just a little introduction. And if I close this, it's not gone forever. It's easy to get it back via project and layouts. And you can have as many layouts as you like. And then once you're done, you can save your project via Project Save As, and any print layout you have in a project will of course be saved as part of the project. So that's just a brief introduction for anyone coming to QGIS from other GIS software who might not know exactly where to look for stuff. Hopefully that's useful, it's helped demystify a couple of things, and hopefully it's gonna help you work a bit more quickly if you are using QGIS as a newer user.